how are we going to investigate these limits of functions with just two variables to start with. So let's establish a couple of, uh, we'll call them facts or properties that will not be proven at this point in time. Kind of a continuation of things from Calc 1 though. So the first property is, is this. If the function that you're working with is uh, of a polynomial form, so this is x, y plus 3x. We know that polynomials are considered, um, you know, so polynomials are continuous functions. And continuous functions are really much simpler to deal with when it comes to limits. The proving of this is really more advanced analysis, certainly more advanced than we have time for um, in this little segment. But if this is a polynomial, we would just simply try to substitute the values of 2 and negative 4 into this function. You know, so that's 2 multiplied by negative 4 plus 3 multiplied by 2. Let's see, negative 8 and 6 is negative 2. And we would say, hey, that's the limit. That's the limit, which happens to be the z value at the point where x and y are 2 and negative 4. But this is the answer to the question. The limit is negative 2. This is just a, an observation about that limit. So let's look at another variation something else that we can sort of assume and work with. x, y still approaches the point 2 comma negative 4. The numerator is this function here, uh, but the denominator is added in here. So this is called a rational function, a rational function. And so a rational function is sometimes defined as a polynomial divided by a polynomial. But regardless, if you do the substitution, you're going to get negative 2 in the numerator, and you will get 0 in the denominator. This is undefined. You guys know the three dots? Therefore, this limit does not exist. Sometimes this is abbreviated as capital D, capital N, capital E in the English language, does not exist. So that's still a fact. So let me show you um, one of the complications of the two variables before we get into really working with some problems that are more interesting than these two examples. These two examples are not unimportant, but they don't play a significant role in the path that we are heading in right now. So let's go back and review something from the beginning of calculus. It's a reminder from the single variable calculus days, x and y axis, this could be considered a piecewise defined function, and we'll just call this function y equals f of x. So if I were to calculate this limit of this function as x approaches 1 from the right hand side. The question is what's the y value when you approach this x value from this direction? Well that y value is 2. But if you approach x is 1 from the left hand side,
what y value do you approach? Well, you approach, you get closer to y is 4. And we learned that since these two values are, that's pretty wild, huh? Different, not the same, that this implied that the limit x approaches 1 does not exist. Does not exist because these m must both be the same as you approach from the right and from the left. From both sides became a key piece of information for dealing with our limits. So let me compound our problem. Let me make us more frustrated before we can then start uh, doing some surgery to do some uh, specific repairs uh, to our information. So what if we are to look at some function of two variables and the x and y values get close to the origin. So in three dimensions we could try to imagine what this looks like x, y, z. Remember this is z, the function is z. So we're saying well what if we approach x and y are both zero. Now we had two choices with single variable calculus. Um, I could approach from here and I could approach from here. But what if I approach from this direction? Or what if I approach from this direction? Or from along the y-axis? Or from back over here? You see me compounding our issues? In two dimensions, if I just look from the top view, there's zero, zero. I can approach from the right or from the left, from the top, from an angle over here, from this direction here. Look at that. I did a little curve in there. We can approach the origin from, well, infinitely many directions. We can approach 0, 0 from infinitely many directions. I'm going to put an exclamation point on that because that is not a small piece of information. We only had two directions to choose from. Right and left when it was an x value only. When it was only the x value. I have to deal with infinitely many directions now. We cannot check them all. And they all have to be the same. They must all be equal for this limit to be existing. So I'm trying to lay out our dilemma. I have a plan. We're going to focus on a couple of ways of studying this. We are not going to get very good at finding just any limit you make up. We are going to look into two specific types of problems that we can wrap our minds around algebraically and build some confidence in. And then before you know it, our foundation of limits, we'll, we'll call it sufficiently laid for what we're going to do next. 
And then we'll move on to some material that will seem much more familiar and manageable. So, stay tuned. See you next time.